Hello and welcome to Tokyo for the third match of the 2019 Rugby World Cup. This venue, of course, played host to the opener last night between Japan and Russia and saw a comfortable win for the hosts. It's a dry day, humidity really not an issue this afternoon for France and Argentina as they open their campaigns in Pool C. So it is the day after the night before. Tokyo was buzzing yesterday for the launch of the competition and the Brave Blossoms delivered on the field. Today, a heavyweight collision between two genuine contenders. Former Wales flanker Martin Williams is here with me, Martin France. As we know, infuriatingly inconsistent, but absolute world beaters on their day. And Argentina, of course, now they've, they've advanced a long time ago from being also Rans. They are high quality knockout threats, potentially. Yeah, good afternoon, Rally. Absolutely cannot wait for this game. Mouthwater in account. There are two teams traditionally over the years save their best for World Cups. And no easy start for both teams. They've got to hit the ground running. Cannot wait. Yes, that's the start of Pool C, which will be enormously competitive. England, Tonga and the USA also in the group. England playing Tonga tomorrow in Sapporo. Great to see the French support here in numbers. They know their side has the talent to beat everyone in the world if they click. They have been in something of a muddle for a while, but um, there is no team in the World Cup that will want to come across France in full flow. They've physically, France have got all the ingredients to go all the way, you know, power, pace, guile physicality in that pack just a question mark over the French are they a United group psychologically can they cope with the pressure if they do they are a very very dangerous team it's a colorful afternoon in Tokyo Jacques Brunel's side arrive here knowing they hold destiny in their own hands really he has an extraordinarily gifted squad to choose from. And their fans are something else. Here they are, arriving at the stadium. Sebastian Vahamahina at the front of the queue. Maxi Medar playing his first World Cup game, believe it or not, since 2011 and the final against New Zealand. And the French, as we know, Martin, they just turn up for these events. They turn up at World Cups. They do. It's an inexperienced French squad. Ten of the start in 15 first World Cups. So those senior players like Medard are crucial. Here's the 23 they've gone with for today. Tried and tested in the front row. Girado, the skipper, the driving force from Hooker. Arthur Ituria was one of the standout players of the recent Six Nations. Vaha Mahina, the line-out lighthouse. Something of an embarrassment of riches in the back row. These three have edged out some big names. Aldrit keeping out Pickamol, for instance. Youth at halfback, Dupont already one of the best scrum halves in the world. And Tamak, untested but enormously talented. A big, big step up today. Bakatawa selected in the centres after a long period of being ignored. Today paired with Fiku in a lovely balanced midfield. Speed and finishing power in the back three. Uge and Medar have been there, done it, and Peno has searing pace. Quality everywhere as well on the bench. Picamol and Lopez, unlucky not to start. Bamba and Ramos amongst the French young guns, expected to blast onto the world stage here in Argentina. It, I should say here in Japan, as we see the Argentinian fans. Twice semi-finalists, the Pumas, they have a great World Cup record against France. They beat them twice, of course, in Paris in the competition eight years ago. They've enjoyed some success under Mario Ledesma Martin, but at the moment on a run of nine straight defeats. Yeah, they're a proud rugby nation, Argentina, predominantly historically built on the power and the strength of their pack. But if anything, that's been their weakness. It's been their Achilles' they scrum. That man there, Mario Ledesma, will look to put that right, potentially. Maybe not the strongest squad they've ever had, but you're right, Dali, they do tend to save their best for the World Cup. So, underdogs today, they will cause France problems. Here are the Pumas today, a ton of experience in the front row. Cravey, a talismanic figure at hooker. Figalo will anchor the scrum from tight head. Two huge locks, Lavanini has seen his reputation skyrocket in recent seasons, and Petty winning his 50th cap today. Matera skippers from one flank, Kramer will hit hard from the other. And at number eight, Ortega Desio has ousted Facundo Iso, which is no mean feat. A well-established half-back pairing now, Kubeli and Sanchez have developed a, a good understanding in recent times. 
trickery and hard lines in equal measure in the centres. De La Fuente with a half century of caps behind him. And a back three that can tear teams apart. Moyano, Moroni and Buffelli keeping out star names like Imoff and Cordero who are not here in Japan. Puma's bench doesn't perhaps have quite the clout of the French, but men like Alamano and Montoya carrying plenty of top flight knowledge. So the Argentinians with a strong 15, but uh, perhaps not quite the same depth of quality as France, Martin, but they're, they're well used to the big time. They've spent a long time in the rugby championship and exposure to the best in the world has really assisted them. Yeah, it has. You know, they've struggled really since the last World Cup when they got to the semi-finals. I think they're struggling with their identity. They've tried to become you know, more fluent in their game, but maybe they've come too loose and, you know, they've gone away from what traditionally their strengths was the scrum, the driving line out. And they've almost become too loose and tried to play in New Zealand type rugby without the New Zealand sort of players. So, be very interested in the attack next today because the French have got a very, very strong set piece. And they'll come hard at the Argentinian pack. There are the two skippers, Guillem Girado to the left and Pablo Matera to the right. Angus Gardner, our referee today from Australia. And the French winning the coin toss, they will kick us off. Once again, a capacity 50,000 strong crowd packed into the Tokyo Stadium as these two prepare to get their World Cup underway in what promises to be a fascinating pool. It might go right down to the wire, Martin. Yeah, such a tough pool, England in there. And these two teams, what an opening game for them. There's no easy first game up just to find your way into the World Cup. You've got to hit the ground running. Huge rivals, very emotional teams, very emotional fans, full of colour. It's going to be some afternoon. Hopefully the conditions will stay as they are, They'll stay dry. We should be in for an absolute cracker this afternoon. Well, we've got the ideal atmosphere, that's for sure. And huge numbers of Argentinian fans. Really striking number, actually, as we walked into the stadium here today. They have come an awfully long way. Japan, just about the furthest place away from Argentina as you could possibly find. So there is plenty of commitment here, not just on the field, but off it too. Yeah, we were travelling on a train, speaking to one of their supporters, it's taken 23 hours to make the trip. So a hell of an effort from the Argentinian fans. Lots of French here as well, very noisy, very vocal. Hopefully those guys there can give both sets of supporters something to shout about. So no doubt a few nerves in the dressing rooms. The French just making sure the final instructions are clear. Biggest days of some of these players' lives, Martin. Absolutely, it is. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of those players there, 10 of the starting 15, first World Cup game. They've been slammed from pillar to post, France, over the last four years. Really haven't lived up to potential. And really emotional, always emotional, always fantastic to see the Argentinians before a game. No lack of emotion. How you control that emotion is the key to these big games shortly two of the best anthems in world rugby as well big big moment for both these teams well the final preparations are now complete all those final messages conveyed well if that doesn't stir the blood i don't know what will well we said they were Fantastic, that's all, obviously all the Argentinian replacements there, firing up the start in 15. Brilliant pictures. I guess the challenge probably going to be trying to keep minds clear and, and focused while that kind of thing is going on, whilst their own hearts are all but beating outside of their chests. Absolutely, you know, a top-class rugby, international rugby, that emotion lasts for the opening 10, 15 minutes, then it's the top two inches which will count keeping your composure making the right decisions at crucial times keeping your discipline for both these teams and just see it in their eyes they're up for this one
beats the drums. Locked and loaded for the start of Pool C. And two sides that have grand designs here in Japan. They might not be featuring amongst the favourites to lift the cup in too many people's minds, but both France and Argentina absolutely have the firepower to make a strong challenge here. The best of stages. And the anthems are on their way. Argentina will be first up. So the culmination of an awful lot of hard work, not just for the players who've made it here in Japan, but for the coaching staffs as well. Jack Brunel much criticised in the last few years, a defining few weeks, and Mario Ledesma, a more proud, committed Puma you will not find. Incredibly emotional anthems. Some of the best anthems in world rugby, surely. And we're ready for the start of another World Cup journey for these two. The French three times runners-up, but never champions. Argentina twice semi-finalists and looking to force their way into title contention. 
each have suffered badly in recent times from inconsistency, but Martin, the World Cup allows for teams to build momentum through the tournament, don't, doesn't it? It's why this match is so important as a kickstart. Oh, absolutely, Ali. You, you look at the victors today, they will take so much momentum into the rest of the tournament, so much confidence, which is what this game is built on. That man there, Sanchez, both pairs of half-backs are absolutely crucial. When he plays well, Nicolas Sanchez, Argentina play well. Cabelli, bags of experience inside him, and opposite, two fairly young half-backs in Dupont and Entomac, who are potentially world-class. Matchups all over the park. So our referee for today's match is Angus Gardner of Australia. And the prep is done. The blood, sweat and tears of the last four years has brought the players to this moment, to this venue, here in Tokyo, to this World Cup. It's time to deliver where it matters. And we're underway in Pool C. Driven deep onto the 22 by Romain and Tamak. A very young French fly half. Many, many eyes will be on him yes, this it's... afternoon. This is going to be a big step up for him. Argentina with experience at half-back. The likes of Kubeli and Sanchez will look to control the tempo of the game. Medar sets off on a decent little run beyond the 10-metre line. Dupont for Poirot. Tamak using Fiku. Here's Ituria, one of the stars of the Six Nations. It was a poor campaign for France in its entirety, but Ituria certainly stood out in a side that was struggling. Poirot again on the carry. And Tamak. Good. High into the Tokyo air, and he's just overcooked it by a fraction. Yeah. Nearly a perfect kick from Antomac, plays a lot of rugby at 12 as well, so expect Argentina to put lots of pressure on the young number 10 in his face, put pressure on him, make Mark decisions Blue. under pressure. Not the oh. ideal start for the young outside half. Yeah, wait, Good defensive set from Argentina, some oh. physical hits, winning the game line, forcing Antomac yeah. into the kick. We stop. No. So the French, well, they are they're fully loaded on the coaching front. I think we can say that with great certainty. Jacques Brunel flanked by Sebastian Bruno, but uh, Fabien Galtier is here, who will succeed Jacques Brunel after the World Cup. There he is in the glasses to the right of your screen. Julien Bonner to the left. Jean-Baptiste oh, Delassalde is here. Laurent Labitte is here. They don't lack for staff members. Time back on. Quality players, those very inexperienced coaches, straight in the international level. This is going to be key to set piece this afternoon. Gravy finding Lavanini. And uh, across the game line, thanks to De La Fuente, but an intercept here, and Olivon is setting France on their way down this five metre channel through Medal. Poirot, lovely handling from the loose head to move the point of attack. Ball's available there. Dupont, dangerous threat from the base, but um, not assisted there by Wenceslas Loré. Yeah, good chance for France there. I think Madar, um, Johan Hugé, apologies, wrong decision to put yep. the ball. Great line speed from Olivon. Up, in the, is up into the Argentinian attack line, here it goes, reads the play, intercepts. Great play by Vakatawa, just think, yeah, Hugé, just keep the ball. He's a big man, he's got number seven on his back with the First French tradition, that's the blind side. Nice gap, wait for the corner. West Cass, Laurie with number six on his back, they tend to play left and right, not the traditional open side, Crouch. big men, big powerful men, and young Andre, as you mentioned, Ali, getting the nod over pick -em he's some player. Set, keep it up, good. This is a, a serious clash at scrum time, but the opening penalty has been handed to the Argentinians. 
Juan no. Figaro. Something of a veteran at this point. Anchoring the Puma scrum. So, line night time. Time to bring in Carl Tanana, who's with us in commentary no, three, this afternoon in, uh, in Tokyo. You've got the best view in the house, Carl. Yeah, afternoon, gentlemen. Already some positive intent from both teams, isn't it? But that's a good win for Argentina, especially at scrum time, because there have been France. some questions good. around that area of the Puma. Good start. Yep, scrum has been something of an issue, which is unusual for Argentina. Their side over many, many years has been built on set-piece dominance. They've been struggling recently at scrum time, and so too the Jaguares in Super Rugby, which is essentially the Pumas team. But they're building some momentum here. And Kubeli is feeding it out to a skipper, Matera, who is bundled very, very effectively. Nice bit of work here from De La Fuente. They're trying to draw some dividends through the middle of the ruck at the moment. Sanchez, crossfield, short stabby one, and he's misjudged that. Yeah, reminiscent of Entomac, isn't it? Just running out the patience, both ends. Some good work from the Argentinian pack. Petty from the line out gets over the game line. Crevy, great carry. But then just as good line speed from France. Third, fourth phase, getting up off the line, making the uh, hits. Okay, forcing yeah. them into quick real arm wrestle well. the first four minutes. These teams know each other so well. Yeah, yeah. Let's go, please, France. Yep, there have been some famous matches between these two, not least in 2007, which the Argentinians will remember with great fondness. They beat France in Paris on the opening night of their own World Cup, and then they beat them again in the bronze medal match. Yeah, he's trapped in there. Hold. Just a couple of the Rugby World Cup lows for the French. There have been plenty of highs, that's for sure, but those occasions will not be favourable memories. Up it goes from Dupont. Play on. Backwards off France. Looking for momentum from Guido Petty, winning his 50th cap in the second row this afternoon. It's KG, isn't it, Ali? They're both, both teams. No one's quite winning the game line. Defences are organised. Cabelli with the box kick. And very oh, nearly God. brilliantly claimed, but uh, forwards ultimately from Ntamak. Uh, knock on into touch. Many will Option. remember his father Emil striding the world stage in 1995 yeah, and 1999 Option. World knock Cups. Chip off the old out. block. Line out. Line out. Yeah, he's a quality player, Ntamak. Line he is inexperienced. So he tends to float around from 10 to 12. Yeah. Yep. To, uh, not an auspicious start, oh, straight into the touch, drops the high ball, sure good kick from Cavalli, they've chosen to go for the line-out oh, instead of the scrum Argentina, which is interesting. Lavanini with the line-out possession for the Pumas. Some Heavyweight collisions place it into him. in and around the ruck at the moment. Change of plan there from Cabelli. They look to go through the middle, bringing in Ramiro Moyano. And still they pull forwards. De La Fuente has been heading into heavy traffic throughout, but here Sanchez has given the treatment. No, no, no. Back out now. Yes, a great hit from Poirot. He's been heavily involved. Uh, Lucet for France. Three or four carries earlier, earlier in the match, and a great hit there. Oh, oh. God. Figalo with the spill. My advantage to France. Advantage, advantage. here to the French. Medar. What's advantage available? Nice ball on. for Aldrit to run onto. Olivon is there in support. Quick hands here could be interesting. Medar keeps it alive. Uge will look to exploit any holes. Stay down, nine. Well done. Penno, first sight of Damien Penno, who has been tearing it up domestically and on the international stage since his arrival. Oh, That's gone forwards off the fingertips. And the Argentinians will have to scrum. Yes, threatening to come to life, but just not quite sticking. Seven. Fumble from Figaro. At the breakdown, you know, don't place the ball. Wasn't quite sure in two minds in France, some good counter-attack. Medard is so dangerous, okay. such a clever footballer. Okay. 
Some good angles, Laurie, good carry up the middle, good offload. Really well shut down on the outside from Argentina when they tried to go wide. Here we go, boys. Here we and go. again, breaks down in midfield. Okay. Okay. Well, both teams really, you have to say, early on, lads, still a bit of nerves. I think they know what this main match is, so still snatching at the balls. And normally, they take those types of passes. So, what a team, whatever team settles down first, you think will have the advantage. A yeah, little nervy, a little edgy, one or two errors out there, balls going out in the full, couple of knock-ons. As you might expect for the opening ten minutes of a big Rugby World Cup match. Crouch! Argentina, Fine. let's just remind you, on a run of nine Six. straight defeats, it's the Still. worst in their history. They've only scored seven tries in the last seven Fine. test matches, it's been a problem. Fine. Cabelli for Sanchez and De La Fuente. Big tackle coming in from Uge. Medar off the floor to Peno. He'll like the look of this broken field. Peno, but look at that crunching tackle from Cravey. Stopped Peno dead in his tracks. Yeah, that's not one guy you want to run straight down, Augustine oh, Cravey. Huge man. Huge collision. Now, there it is, play. Dupont. Very, very lively player. He's become a, a hugely influential yeah, character Paul. in that French squad in a very short space of time. There's Cravey again, locked over the ball, and the Argentinians working the chug tackle to very strong effect. Okay. Okay. So let's have another look at this Fiku tackle. No place for the faint-hearted out there, is it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with that, that's ball and all. Clearly wrapping his arm there. Argentinian fans don't like it, but this hit here from Crevy on Peno. Oh. Huge collision. Does well, Peno, to ride the challenge. When he broadly stayed on his feet, yeah, didn't he? he? Did really Remarkably. Well, that's some hit. Goodness knows how. Well, as a former winger, I, I'd suggest you get a step in there, <laughs> Peno. I mean, he got, got absolutely oh deleted. No. But this guy, lads, he's going to be amongst yeah. everything, Crevy. He's the real heart yeah, of this Argentinian team, that's for sure. Boys, yeah, boys, he is. He's it. fantastic in the breakdown as well. A real hold, nuisance. Please. Gets over the ball, wins numerous turnovers for Argentina. Yeah, former captain. For four years, he led the team. This is third World Cup. Wonderful noise inside the stadium. Scrum trouble. Yeah, I know, because I want to see the stability. Yeah, I want to see, I want to see the stability both teams, please. Let's go. Okay. Angus Gardner keen to lay down the law, make things very clear for these two packs early on. Both sides that traditionally like to dominate with Crouch. their scrummage. Yeah, Rabat Slimani Fine. on the far side was penalised for the first scrum. Set. And he seemed Still. to be in a little bit of trouble in the second scrum as well, really going up. Not a penalty going Argentina's way at scrum time. Number one, Number one that time, Jefferson Poirot for not keeping his feet. And there's Poirot having uh, his hands full with one Figalo. Yeah, props at the old, they'll all argue the case the other way. Yep. It's interesting because I Shot. my understanding of it, you'll know Hold. a great deal more than I will, Shot. Martin. The the way yes. Yes. some of these props scrummage, Figolo's body position, for instance, would be very, very different to Rava Slimini, who we're, we're always told is this squat, powerful figure gets really low. It is, you know, the big men and strong men, but it's such a technical position as well. and. You know, they'll play cat and mouse with the referee as well. There'll be lots of talking between the referee and the six front rowers. The hook has huge experience in both hookers, Gerardo and Crevy. So they'll constantly be in the year of Angus Gardner. Long range shot from Sanchez flies wide. Yeah, I've always missed that, Sanchez. I think Argentina will be fairly happy with the start of this game. Been very physical. You know, two penalties from scrum time. The line-out's gone well. 
This has been a good start from Argentinians. Hold in front, good. Sent high again by Sanchez. Coming forwards is Aldrich, but it's fallen nicely for Petty. And Petty's stretching his long legs and he's barging his way through. And he's barreling French defenders out of the way. And Argentina are on the rampage. Boffelli on a short line. The ball pulled back. Trouble here for France. Vakatawa doing his level best to hold on to Lore. Pouring through the middle. Red lights blinking here for the French. Kubeli. Advantage side France midfield. Those little short pop passes in and around the rock, but he's taken out very effectively by Aturia. It's gone backwards. <laughs> and Argentina have the penalty. Good advantage. What a passage Outside of play from midfield. the Pumas. Brilliant from Petty on his 50th cut. Midfield. The big man brushing defenders off for fun. Number. And it's actually a situation where you're happy if you're fast well, if you just concede three two, because two. this looked like try time. Yeah, Great contest by Buffelli into the hands of Petty. Yeah. And I'm away. Great carry, KT. Oh, outstanding, way over the advantage line. And one thing you can see, sideline, they're starting to dominate the contact of Pumas at the moment. The confidence is up. The French team getting together in the huddle because they were disjointed. Yeah, both sides that love to ride the wave of momentum. And it's Argentina who have that right now, and they have their first points of the match, thanks to Nicolas Sanchez. It's difficult to take things before match about teams that are pumped up. But if you go back to the shots beforehand, the anthems, they seemed up for it more, the Argentinians. You know, you could say that the French are calm and cool, but we've definitely seen that in the opening 15 minutes. They're right up for this Argentina. They seem to be more on the edge than the French players. Tamak again lands it on the Argentinian 22. Outside, use it. Cabelli calling for support and, more importantly, protection. Medar. Good work from Aldrit. Here's Vaha Mahina. Dupont quickly away. Lore. Tamak spotted space in behind the Argentinian defence. Well covered ultimately by Sanchez, who's cool as a cucumber. All using all his experience there, Sanchez. He's unlucky there, and Tamak was a great kick. Just sometimes you're unlucky with the bounce of the rugby ball. He's found space. Penno was flying down the right wing, but just the bounce of the ball. And as you say, Sanchez, how calm is that under pressure? But good defence again from Argentina, winning that game line. French forwards finding it very difficult to get any momentum, making their hits. The Argentinians and really sticking. Medar standing up well under the aerial barrage. Another drive from Aldrit. 22 years old, only his fourth test start this afternoon. At least three! Playing in some Good. very big matches very early in his career. And Tamak for Fiku. Little shake of the hips and he's off towards the 10 metre line. Lovely balanced runner, Gail Fiku. And Tamak fighting Medar, lots of Frenchmen lined up to the right, and now there's trouble for Argentina as Penno is slipping through one tackle, driving his way towards the line. What a run that is from Penno. Set up wonderful field position, Dupont, that didn't quite stick for Aldrit. But Girardo is there. Dupont finds in Tamak. Vakatawa is going to take them on, and he's going to line it up for Fiku. Fiku! Straight from France. Gael Fiku touches down. That's one of their very best. That's sensational from France. It's exactly what they can do to you. Damien Penno, look out for this kid. He is going to be an absolute star in this World Cup. Thank you. Are you happy with that knockback? Great play by the French. To get on the outside of the Thank Argentinian you. defence, a very narrow. Makes the call to go on his own. He backs himself. Just so much strength, power. Thought the play had broken down between Aldrit, but the ball has definitely gone backwards there, no knock-on. Good check, Marius, thank you, buddy. And then the two centres, who are so dangerous, Fakatawa, one-on-one, oh, -on -one, stands Matera up, gets the ball to Fico, 
Such a balanced runner, that is sensational play from the French KT. Almost definitely, Gail That's Fiku, he's the one that got it all started with that initial run, and then the razzle from Vitami Vakatawa, giving it yep. off to his centre partner. And he had a lot to do, Fiku, there's a nice try. Yeah, it took a bit of finishing, didn't it? He's had a, a slightly stop-start career for um, such an extraordinary athlete, such a brilliant player. He's been picked and dropped a little bit. And he's taken his time to really cement his place. Made his debut at the age of 18. And that is a fine kick from Roma and Tamak, befitting the try. Yeah, it's taken him 18 minutes to wake up the French. But that was sensational, ball in hand, continuity, so many athletic runners behind in that back line. And it's a great finish for Figo, still had a lot of work to do, but as you mentioned, such a gifted athlete. And Tamak got that away neatly, yeah, under right a good now. deal of pressure. Good. So the pendulum has swung, Boffelli runs it back for Argentina. That's loose, and there's trouble here potentially for Argentina again. Aldrit is chasing hard. And just beyond the 22, there was some brave work on the deck. Yeah, really good ball, right, brilliant right, pressure from Dupont on Sanchez. Again, puts the outside half in two minds with it, a kick, he thinks he's going to get charged down and fumbles the ball. Gone up the gear, the French. So a little bit more calm and organisation returns to the Pumas. Teta Shaparo sets it up. Kubeli. Nicely weighted this. Medar arrives, but it's claimed by Moroni. Cravey. Looking like... Another Holding kicking front. option from Sanchez, certainly peppering that, that French back three. Yeah, That's very well claimed by Ntamak. And Fiku's there. <laughs> He's somehow clawed his way through the tackle of Kubeli. And here they come once more through Olivon. Dupont. Oh, another thunderous tackle. Lavanini piling in. Still down as well. The Frenchman, that hurt. And Tamak is feeding Fiku and Medar. Peno's lost it, but recovers. Dupont. Yeah, fine. has caught. Was there a little knock on there from Slimani? Regardless, Vakatawa is okay, setting off into the heart of the defence. Yeah, from from Medar. This is Fiku again. Two men bought the dummy. Leave it! You're off. Good. Bakatawa gets it away from the tackle. Meda feeds Peno, and here's Dupont. France, loving life in Japan. Now, this is France from yesteryear, isn't it? Just continuity, offloading, irresistible to watch, impossible to stop. Fico at the heart of everything with his carries, with his offloads. He's the man who got them going in midfield. Poirot, a little off the floor, great hands for Medard. Here he is, Fiku, just gets him on the front foot. And then back down the short side. Fakatawa, the two centres are causing havoc with Argentina. Fopino is in. The great support line from Dupont. This is amazing, Rugby KT. Oh, it's just outstanding how they're able to create spaces by using the ball. There's the initial run again from the danger man, Fiku. But some of these passes are absolutely delicious. Two absolute screamers from the French. Well, we said they turned up for the World Cup. Only twice have they not managed to reach the semi-finals. Quarter-finals or better at all eight Rugby World Cups, even allowing for the old hiccup. We mentioned the Argentina win in 2007, early in the pool. They were beaten by Tonga in the pool back in 2011, remember? Recovered to make the final. Only lost by a single point to New Zealand. And then Tamak, dead straight. 
But we were speaking out yesterday, you know, we came to watch the French their team run and we were just looking at their players, saying if they click, they are one of the dangers, they're one of the dark horses. And this game is totally flipped on, the, on its head. Argentina not done a lot wrong, but they've just come to life. France, two superb tries. This is Oliver. Yeah, it's fine. Leave it to now. Good. Well, Dupont are able to get man. the ball away. It's Argentinian ball and uh, some quick work from Matera. Advantage. It's gone forwards from De La Fuente. And here's Dupont Advantage probing over. that short side again. Peno and Dupont, those two causing absolute havoc at the moment. Olivon to Girardo. No, back on, no, back on. French rolling back the years here in Tokyo. Aldrit Knock on. for Lore. Set him up for that. <laughs> just when it's all fluid, you get two back rowers in midfield just to spoil everything is typical. But again, you mentioned those two men, two young players, Dupont and Peno, causing complete Fifteen, havoc. Well Gives done. a great turnover initially Good from Thank you. Crevy. A great read defensively from Peno to force the turnover. And here he goes, so dangerous. Both men strong. Olivon, he's been everywhere as well. The French seven in support. Great off-roading, brilliant to watch. Well, there is nothing quite like it in world rugby. When the French have their tails up, it is a, a wonderful, spectacular sight. This is um, Nicolas Sanchez, who's requiring a little bit of treatment off the back of that collision with Olivon. Yeah, it looks like his right shoulder, isn't it? Big man, Olivon. Just caught an over position, hopefully, for Argentina's sake. It's not too serious. Look at that, nine offloads to one. And like you say, Ali, when the French are up for it, when they when they are mentally in a, in a good place, they are so dangerous. He's made a big difference as well, Antoine Dupont, yeah. to this team. He is such a live wire, very strong. Come on. An eye for a gap and linking beautifully with his back division. Guys, guys, both teams, hit and hold, please, keep the height up. Just if you're Argentina, if it, were, if it was a tactical injury yep. from Sanchez, it was very yeah, yeah, clever, because yeah, yeah, you just need to take the sting out of this game. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Just slow it down just a split second, because no, I know. this French oh, juggernaut yeah, is yeah, unstoppable yeah, at the moment. Yeah, it's a good point you make, man, because look like just before they break, the Argentinians really did hit the wall and looking for their second win, so I think, yeah, the timing for them very much so as you see the French supporters in full force. Fabulous rendition of the Marseillaise. Ringing around the Tokyo Stadium. And why not when their team is playing like no, they are not happy with the binding here. there is so much to I'm sing about you can't get a grip yeah we despair yeah, of them at times the, because yeah, boys, um, we know the talent so they have we know the abilities the, within the their side and for many months and indeed up. years Jacques yeah. Brunel has struggled to find the key he has struggled to find the the fluency let's just remind ourselves they haven't won the six nations since 2009 they finished in the bottom half of the six nations table in seven of the last eight years it's incredible with the resources the French have got at their disposal. They should be doing far better. Crouch. Bind. Just really disjointed over the last few Six. years, but they've hit the ground running. This opening pool game. And the scrums have been a mess. There's lots of resets. Angus Gardner is going to have a chat with the six front rowers. Come here, please. Three, three. Here. The issue, boys, is that you can't get a bind up. So I'm thinking you need to set a little bit closer yep. so you can reach to get a bind up, okay? On the hit, I want it stable, okay? Binds up, both, okay? Let's go, please. Here we go. Well, stability is the, uh, so you can get a the holy grail, isn't it? Yeah, as just, far as the scrum is yep. concerned. Yeah, <laughs> just explain it to the props. They're probably standing too far away from each other. That setup wants them a little bit closer. We saw Poir Poirot penalised earlier for being it's losing his feet, which does Crouch. suggest he's too far back. And down it goes again, free kick to Argentina. 
Yeah, Slimani's not happy. He's gone too early, though. He started the shove early. It's good play from Cabelli, the scrum half. Just holds the ball. Doesn't put it in. Slimani for the early shove. Rightly penalised. Another high ball for the French to field. Ituria taps it back. It's gathered in by Aldrit. Okay, release, it's a tackle! Move, guys. Yeah. Uh, it's a tackle, boys. Everyone trapped in. French ball. Just a, a slightly scrappy period yeah. after, what, ten minutes of, of dynamite? Yeah. As I said, I think Argentina will be pleased with that. You know, they were just on so, had so much momentum, the yeah. French. Okay, here we go. No, no. I think this I'm is France's first put in at Let's the go. scrum, actually. Here. So it'll always tells a story. If it's very solid on your own ball, normally that means you're in the ascendancy. Just got their hands full this Argentinian backline with these the French backline, the two centres, feet France. going back to Tower. Bind! Set! Good. That's Stay there on. at the feet of Here's Aldrich. It. Dupont Here's. in communication with his number eight and linking nicely. And drifting wide for Ntamak to feed Peno. Peno, this gifted runner, and he is absolute grease lightning when he gets moving. And Tamak again, Fiku sending it wide for Girardo. Uge on the outside. Girardo takes the contact, and there's plenty of it. Disappointing from the French perspective. Forwards from Poirot, and we have another injury to attend to on the far side of the field. Yeah, great attack from France. They use the two big centres as decoys. Get the ball out wide to Peno, and he just glides across the field. Must be impressed with him, KT. Such a gifted runner. Oh, outstanding. But you're right, it came from the nice platform for France. It was a double back ball with a miss pass. Just created the space, but he's just so lethal in space, isn't he? Jumps up, takes the shot. Going to have to be a little bit careful with the way he's leading with his arm there, I suspect, Martin. There'll be some referees who won't take kindly to that. No. All happens very quickly there, doesn't it? Argentinian fans. <laughs> Look at that, six carries, 58 metres, six defenders beaten. He just seems to have easy pace, doesn't he? Easy speed. He doesn't look as if he's putting a huge amount into it, and yet he is moving like an absolute rocket. It's just Son a balanced, of, um, Sally, isn't it? He's such a balanced runner. Yeah, absolutely. Son of Alain, comes from good stock. Alain Peno played in the, uh, the mid to late 90s. Yeah, it makes you feel old. They played against his father. I think his son's a little quicker. Yeah, good out to the half, actually. Good footballer, Alan, Alan Pano. And to Mark taking the three from France. It's kicked well from the tee so far. Two fantastic conversions. Bit of a shaky start from the young outside half, but grown into the game. Twenty years old, the youngest player in the French squad. One of the graduates of the successful French under-20 side from 2018. And 100% from the tee so far this afternoon. Three from three for Emil and Tamak. It's all France in Tokyo. Yeah, French fans are happy. Really got their tails up. Argentina started the game very well, first 18 minutes, but sort of the, the penalty, three points that Argentina took and really walking this French side up. Little pause on the restart as <laughs> Olivier sized up his opportunities, but here they've surrendered the ball. Yeah, great work from the captain Matera over the ball, wins the turnover. And this is an interesting decision here. The 17 3 down, you go for the corner. Would you take the three points just to chip away at the scoreboard? Looks like they're going for the corner. Big moment for Argentina. This. They've got to come away with something. Even plenty of time left in this game, but psychologically, they need to come away with points. Yeah, they've been owning the breakdown, Martin. That's the thing for Argentina. It's about their third turnover, and they have a very good rolling ball as well. 
Needing some momentum, needing something before half-time. The Pumas, nice transfer of the ball. And it's there for De La Fuente, but locked over the top of it for a moment or two was Lore. And they've straight offside. What's the option here? Same again, presumably. Yeah, I think they'll go to the corner again. Expecting, like as KT mentioned, expecting the driving more there. They back peel around the back, defended well by Fast, but Laurie over the ball initially. And just, I think it was Aldred coming back on his feet just to stoop the plate. Big moment in the match. Gravy trying to make himself understood over and above the din. Once. It's there for one Figolo and Cravey at the back of this mall. Trying to work this through the middle of the French pack. The Turia trying to cling on, Aldrit also. Cravey feeds it back, Kubeli for Del Fuente, couldn't quite get it away to Orlando, has gone forwards. And the chance might have gone. Huge psychological blow that for the French. Stopped the driving more, lost a bit of patience, went early into the centres. Fico's line speed off the line creates the turnover. KT, great line speed from Fico, the 12. Outstanding, we've seen what he's done on attack, but the number 12 defensively outstanding. You knew he shut the, down the decision making time of his opposite, Geronimo okay. De La Fuente, yep. and reads it beautifully. Guys, my bad. Yeah, should, he was by yeah, France should, first, I was going to say it should be Argentina. Argentina double knock on Argentina ball. Yeah, yeah. thought he'd got away with it there, Fico, yeah, but knock on initially by Fico. Yeah. So it's an Argentinian yeah, it's, uh, scrum, so they've got another chance. You could argue he was hedging his bets with that tackle. The arm was outstretched to such a great degree that there was always the opportunity of uh, knocking the ball out of the pathway. Yes. Not suggesting we were quite in yellow card territory, but we've we've seen them for close to that. Yeah, you know he knows exactly what he's doing there, Crouch. but extending his body, extending Fine. his arm. Set in. More trouble at the scrum. Right. Angus Gardner wants to see the ball. He might not be alone in that. Here's De La Fuente. Advantage. Argentina close. Here's Lavanini. To the shorter side, Matera leaves it behind, and again another penalty against the French. Offside once more, they are flirting with danger here. You suspect one more, and there will be at least a warning. Yeah, you give away this many penalties in the danger zone, five metres out. That time, just see Fico and Vakatawa just inching, stepping Vakatawa 13. Definitely offside, good call by Angus Gardner. The Argentinian centres, perhaps I've got the guile of the French centres, but they run their body weight. Orlando and De La Fuente run such hard lines. And a smart call going for the scrum too, isn't it, Lair from Pablo Mateta? They know they've got the ascendancy, the Pumas, at the moment, and they'll be thinking exactly that yellow card time if France don't keep it up. Fine! Crucial, they come away with something, some points. Well, it looks like a... Uh, an overexcited Argentinian scrum there. I thought he might have been about to penalise them there, Gardner, for the, the early shove. Tom out. Yeah, Tom out. Tom out. Come on. Front rise, please. Yeah, yeah. A talking to. It's yeah. been that kind of day at scrum time. Yeah. Guys, listen. Front row, please. Guys, listen, please. It's everyone else's That's fault. That's all. Guys, we agreed before the game. It was going to be a hit and hold on the set, okay? I want to see the hit and hold on your ball and on your ball. Do you understand? Okay, let's go, please. Yeah, they're a special breed, the front row boys. Living their own little worlds. Oh, it's the game within the game, though, no, isn't it? It really isn't. I, I think, even though the French have been penalised a lot, I think they are the dominant scrum. You saw on their ball, it was very solid, very compact. The problem is when Argentina have the put in. Well, they should Crouch. be salivating at this prospect. Fine. Nice short side Six. to work with if Steel. they Steel. chose to, but the bulk of the players Good. stacked to the open side. Good scrum from France. And we're going to see another Good reset by the look of things. Reset. Slimani is not happy. Yeah, I can't play on. 
much head shaking. Yeah, Taylor Shapiro did well. Just, Same again, just this to Angus Gardner. There are probably about six people really enjoying this right now, and they're all occupying their front yeah. row positions on the field. Crouch. Bind. Set. Steal. Stand up. Dear, oh dear. Close up. Close We're an electric ten minutes to be a fan, so now it's. So it's not what we come to. All those fans do not want to come and see time and time reset scrums. So frustrating. They seem happy enough, but yeah, you make your own fun, don't you? When you uh, when you have a situation such as this, and they're well capable of doing that. We just saw before this previous scrum went down two legs with little preview of what Argentina are going to do. They're going to send their 12 and 13 really close and flat to the line. Yeah, they're lined up exactly in that fashion, aren't they? De La Fuente and Orlando Fine. facing in, looking to cut Six. that hard line. Still. They just need to see the ball, which is proving problematic. And this time, it's a French penalty. The Argentinians have not taken care of their own ball, and with half-time approaching, that is one for the big boys. Oh, that's a huge moment in the game, it really is. Reset after reset after reset, and Slimani's been gesturing all game. Yeah, that Shaparo's either coming in on the angle or standing at that time. That man there, Slimani, superb power, scrum, technique, wins the penalty for his team. Just see him on this side, the power. You can see he's, he's the man going forward. It forces Shaparo to stand up and turn Ledesma. He's not happy. He's happy. Big win for the French front row. Big win and a big celebration. Right in the ear hole of his opposite number. Ituria with line out possession following Medar's clearance kick. Slimani being driven forwards towards the 10 metre line. And another penalty coming France's way. So that's just a little momentum shift, oh, certainly in terms of the way the referee is taking care of business here. Yes, yeah, a coach killer from Lavanini. There's such a soft penalty. They're going to find themselves from five meters out. Fantastic opportunity. Well, to well within their own half, defending the line out, just for lack of discipline. Easy out for the French. And in two booming left boots from Maxi Meda. They go from five metres out from their try line to the opposition ten metre line. Yeah, just just flopping all over the ball, isn't he? Playing the ball on the floor. Thomas Lavanini, all six foot seven and twenty and a half stone of him. Played every single test match under Mario Ledesma. Ball won by Olivon. Stop once! Made a late charge for the World Cup squad, Olivon, not in the original 31-man party announced in June. Dupont for Pano, quickly onwards from Ntamak, and now opportunities for Uge inside the 22. Medar looping round. Yeah, turnover's good. Turnover is good, Argentina have worked very hard on the ground, and now France have recovered it. Bakatawa. Now that surely looked forwards. The ball is lost. Gathered in by Sanchez, skirting down the touchline. Not quite managing to tiptoe inside it. Yeah, it's all happening, isn't it? Again, the Argentines are not quite sure who to pick. Pick out some great decoy lines, great ball between Peno and Entomac. Yeah, Set Mad Medard into midfield. Yeah, clear break. Good scramble defence from Argentina, though, KT. Oh, outstanding, and it needed to be, didn't it, Martin? But, geez, they look good when they get the ball wide, this French team, the double hit. Well, there's a, an interesting shot there as well that referee, or indeed the TMI, might be interested in with a tackle yeah. around the uh, around the head area. So Peno disappointed. Yeah, whereabouts, mate? I think they've picked it up. The yeah. TMO's picked this up. Okay. Yeah. We're going to have a look at it. We're going to have another look at it. I've had a referral, so number nine white high over the shoulder. I'm going back for the penalty. Five. 
France, the beneficiaries. Thomas Kubeli. Number nine. Falling foul of the laws, and we knew, everybody knew. Yeah, the players are all fully aware, you know, World Rugby and referees have been told to calm down on anything around the head area, and rightfully so. That time, just how he jumps off his feet, Kubeli. No, no card for me, but an obvious penalty. In some respects, there was absolutely nowhere else for Kubeli to tackle him. Every other part of the body was covered by other defenders. But um, the penalty is the result, and France have the chance to extend their lead with the clock in the red as we head for the break. He's been immaculate, off the kicking tee, Roma and Tamak. Allez la France, they've been sensational in patches. And a couple of screaming tries, one from Fiku, one from Dupont. And the Argentinians have not had things their own way. It has been spellbinding at times, we've had the old scrum reset into the bargain. But for the most part, most part it's been utterly thrilling. France 20, Argentina 3 at half-time. turn their fortunes around and a 17 point deficit as well they've looked strong in parts they began very brightly Martin but they just couldn't sustain it and then came that withering assault from the French yeah absolutely impressive start from Argentina we mentioned they looked up for this game more than the French and then all of a sudden it's what France can do to you you've seen it time and time again over the years against the best in the world, your New Zealand's, your Australia's, your South Africa's, France are capable of doing this, and they've just been a juggernaut key team. Oh, 100%, with you guys, I think Argentina, they definitely need a score first. I think if France get any points on the board, whether it be three, five, or seven, it'd be a bridge too far for Argentina to bridge that back. What a half of rugby girl Fiku has had. France will need him to sustain it, not just through the next 40, but all the way through the next six weeks. Because with him playing that kind of rugby, they would have every chance, every chance. And a big result here would send one or two shockwaves through world rugby, I suspect. Absolutely, as the game stands now, France are making the... Everybody else in this World Cup stand up and take note. But as we've seen in the past, you never know. <laughs> What can happen with the French? Need to switch on mentally, but you look at their bench, as I mentioned at the half-time, so many threats have come off that bench, so much experience, so much power. Dangerous team. Well, we've had a thrilling first 40 featuring some stunning French rugby. What do we have in store in this second period? France leading by 20 points to three. Nicolas Sanchez through the arms of Var Mahina, taken in by Olivon. Outside. Probably worth reminding viewers that the French threw away a 16 point lead in the Six Nations to lose to Wales. It is certainly not beyond the realms. And Argentina will know that all too well themselves. Fielded this by Boffelli. Hold, White, good. And Tamak, eyes on the prize, but it's been stolen by Buffelli. What a take that is from the Argentinian fullback. Just the kind of thing that will get the Argentinians on the front foot. That looked like a forward pass, but Angus Gardner has let it slide. And here's Cravey. Puma's well up for it in this second period, and already with a penalty advantage. 
points on offer potentially if they need them. They're going, going in search of five or seven rather than three. No advantage offside. But they might just settle for three here. Oh, what a start from the Argentinian fullback, Buffelli. Great kick Number from 12. Sanchez. On the button, all the momentum with that man, Briss, so brave. Beats Antomac in the air, gets Argentina on the front foot. A big call from Argentina here, yeah, whether you just... No, they're going for the corner. I thought they may just take the three. Or is this work a bit harder to get back on just the side? Just that little bit of cutting edge. Yeah. It's such a tricky decision, isn't it? Good kick, though. It's a difficult kick from the area where Sanchez was to actually put that on the five. Yeah, he's tucked it nice and close, as close as he could. And what a statement this would be if they could come away with points from this field position early in the second half. Cravey. Well claimed, and the drive is excellent, and Argentina are over for the score! An early blow in the second half, a message sent to France. Argentina are here to scrap. And didn't they need that? It was a brilliant take initially from Buffelli to get him on the front foot. That time the French gamble, the French forwards competed to try and steal the ball off the Argentinians. And if, you, if the gamble doesn't come off, you're so exposed. And it's a, see this, they've gone up, Olive on. Lack of numbers, great driving line out to Pet. He's had a really standout game so far. Has he grounded that? Yes, he eventually grounds it. The big man. It's exactly what the Argentinians needed, KT. Oh, the former line yourself, you would have loved the line out like that. The area with which they attacked the French team was no defence whatsoever. Great execution. And the two added by Nicolas Sanchez. The voices you can hear ringing around this Tokyo Stadium are Argentinian ones. And Guido Petty with his fourth try on the occasion of his 50th cap. Yeah, that looks like the way Argentina, they haven't got the cutting edge or the class of the French backline. But what they do are they very good aerially. And they have got a very organised driving line out. Needed that at the start of the second half, crucial that they scored first. Well, that decision to go to the corner now fully justified. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, and this is Petty on the ball again for the Pumas. He is having a big, big influence on proceedings. Kubeli to the air. Maidar underneath it. Dupont looping round and heading in reverse. Aldrit for Poirot. He's carried well, the French Lou said. Really has huge work rate. Stay on. Aldrit always seems to make ground from a standing start. Number one, stop. And Ntemak is testing out the Argentinian backfield. It's fallen nicely for Olivon, who's in some space here. Dragged to the ground by Boffelli, Dupont disrupted, and he's managed to hack it clear for Medar, who has spotted some space in the backfield, and the bounce is very nearly kindly. De La Fuente has it for Argentina. Driven on by Marcos Kramer. Open side flanker, just 22 years old. And already developing a reputation as one of the, the hardest hitters in the game, but here it's gone forwards, and the French will have the put into the scrum. Yeah, crucial mistake from the Argentinians. Probably when one phase too many, the carry should have cleared their lines probably the phase before. Just loses the number ball 11, in contact Sam. material. Good work from Gerardo. Just been a nuisance, the French captain hook and the contact area to force that spill. Must have the stability, guys. Must have the stability, okay? Change being made. France. And we're seeing the end the of Romero Moyano. Both packs replaced by yeah. Santiago Carreras. Here we go. This is Carreras. Just 21, and named in the Rugby World Cup squad just two days after his debut, which was against South Africa last month. He's had 20 minutes of international rugby, and now here he is at the World Cup in their opening game, 10 points adrift. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Ali, you look at the quality that they've left behind, one Himov, Cadero. Crouch! I think a lot of 
young Carreras. Boys! They're two special players they've left out. Six. Yeah, that raised an awful lot of eyebrows. Cordero and Imoff just capable of total brilliance on their day. Aldrich can't claim it. The Argentinians have done some good work at the scrum. And they've won the penalty as a bonus as well. What a scrum from the Argentinians. We said earlier in the first half the French seemed to be on top of that time. Great shove. Slimani complaining that they're coming at the angle, but they've got away with it, the Argentinians. Great power. Crucial penalty to win. And Martin's going to be a change in the front row for France now after that last one, too, and 16. Camille Chai and also Dimba Bamba. The future of France in Jersey 18. He's a monster. They're all monsters, KT. We're glad we sat on the sideline, the size on these players, the power. Big men, sharp, very explosive hooker. Yeah, he's got some dynamism about him, Camille Chai and Dimba Bamba. is fast developing a tasty reputation of his own so off go Girado and Slimani and uh, as a consequence Jefferson Poirot assumes the captaincy for this French team Cravey with the ball for the pupils oh, keep your blind in there no out Kramer in with the assist Ituria taken out of contention this is a very effective Bench. ball and they've got the penalty advantage and Kubeli is sneaking through through the dummy Snuck through the hole, and here is Kramer again, approaching the 22. Crossfield kick from Sanchez, taken out as he got the ball away. Peno did enough. Very nearly a sensational first touch for Carreras. Well, this is so much better from Argentina. You saw them all came from the driving line out. Sanchez gambles, good cover from Peno, but again they've got another chance, the Argentinians. They've flown up to the blocks in this second half. Fantastic response from the Argentinians. And their fans are up. They're singing, they're chanting. Yeah, they went quiet for a little while. Not so now. This has been a fabulous response in this second period. Yeah, what are the French do? They stay down this time to stop the Dragon Ball. Caught out earlier on for the Argentinian tribe. Here they come. Making good progress, Ortega Desio goes to ground. Still, they keep it tight. Kubeli for Figalo. Kubeli, that looked forwards, it was forwards. He's been flirting with that through the course of this match. Always yeah. difficult when, you're, when your runners are flooding onto the ball with that sort of speed. And KT, that's just where they're struggling, the Argentinians, aren't they? They just haven't got that cutting edge, a little bit of class in the back line, that creativity to bust this French defence. Yeah, they're really trying to hit it at the advantage line, don't they? Those inside centres, he wasn't even looking for the ball then, so that's a miss one from Thomas Kubeli, that's for short. Matias Orlandi, a rueful look on his face. Got some new props on, hit and hold. Okay, and an opportunity for the okay. moment snuffed out. New props on Ali, so see if this scrum is any different. First scrum for those boys for Denver Bar, Kami Sharp. Crouch! Fine! Six! Clean strike and clean ball for Aldrich to feed Dupont. He's given that a hefty thump. And Carreras will think otherwise of the, the early line-out. It certainly seems as if the Argentinians have had significant words at the break, and it's it's made a big difference to their intent. Yeah, it has. They've gone back to type and made this powerful scrum to clear their 22. The driving wall is in play. They're happy. <laughs> Another change being made this time by Mario Ledesma, and we have a new hooker in Julian Montoya. Agustin Crevy is off. Montoya with more than 50 caps to his name, so lots of experience replacing lots of experience. That was a nasty landing for Ituria. And yeah, just, just losing the way a little bit, the French. Ituria, clear penalty just thrown across the line out. You can't do that. 
It's, it's not really a Tourius fault, this is Lifters, Varmahina and Jeff Zumparo yeah, just let the poor man out the dry, just there you go. So Figaro is off for Argentina, Santiago Mandrano is on in his place, so a couple of the older fellas being replaced in the front row for the Pumas. Yeah, don't underestimate how good a kick that is from Sanchez, right on the five-metre line. And again, wouldn't expect the French to compete, you expect them to stay down, defend them all. Montoya. Finds his man in Lavanini. Scored their try from this position on the other side of the field, remember. Montoya is poised. Cubelli, the eyes and ears. Five metres out, they've won the penalty. Cubelli, now potentially a little bit of width. Sanchez is caught by Uge. Still with the penalty advantage. Looking for the crossfield kick. Cubelli, there was a late charge. A late run from uh, Matias Moroni, never really in the running for that, so they'll come back. Yeah, no, from the side, come off. Captain. Just... Yeah, on the inside. Side okay. entry. Um, so at the line out, we have number four jumping across yeah. into the man, then a man in the side. Yeah. Okay, you need to be very careful down here, otherwise you're going to lose someone. You need to be disciplined at the more, okay? It's penalised 18, Denver Bar from the side there. Good patience from Argentinians, good defence from the French initially. Didn't lose patience, kept the ball at the back. His penalties are mounting up against the French. Yeah, they're into double figures, which is always uh, a warning sign. Sanchez again, tucks it into the corner, and they are heaping the pressure on this French line-out. Amazing once you lose momentum in a game, how difficult it is to get it back. Need something special, need a big turnover here from France. Do they stay down? They threw Varmahina up the front in the last line out. Again, the routine is a slick one. And the drive is an excellent one. Montoya is poised. Montoya is scoring. Argentina coming right back into the running. They've come far in this second period and France are losing their way well, it's old school rugby from Argentina it's what they've been known for over the years driving more and the French pack just cannot cope with it brilliant work from the Argentinian pack patience great accuracy they stay down the French they're well aware they know what's coming but they just can't stop it all in unison that French pack the Argentinian pack, my apologies, and that man, Montoya. You get the headlines, but it's the men in front doing all the hard work. KT, this game has turned on his head. Well, oh, whatever Mario Ledesma said to his team at halftime, but obviously it worked, that is outstanding. They've gone back to their staple diet, the driving more, and what a way to make an impact from Julian Montoya. Tough kick for Sanchez. It sails on by, but they're back within five. Yeah, you mentioned that game. The opening game, Ali, and the open Six Nations when the French were 16 points up against Wales. You know, lots of these French players were involved in that. The demons do start to creep in. Just no spark, no energy from the French in this second half. Argentina have gone up in a, a gear, and we have got a game on here. They've gone up a gear, their fans have gone up a gear. Bernard LaRue has come on for Arthur Ituria in the French second row and Boffelli is making his way beyond the 22 is Kramer well done take him back in oh one okay, I'm now. Medar Aldred hard and straight Camille Schatt, very dynamic hooker, and the offloading game is in. Very good, Nick Varmaina is there. So too Dupont, felled by Petty. Advantage. Argentina have claimed possession, and 
Montoya is going to ground. There was a very dangerous moment there for the okay, Pumas. Yeah, it was Charles on his seven. power coming shot the replacement hooker, but what inside? What a saving tackle from Guido Petty. On his 50th cap, he has been immense for Argentina today. So a similar field position to a moment or so ago. And this time it's in Tamak, who is clobbered by Kramer. Buffelli. And inside. Oh, you love that as a seven when a ten just ambling around the halfway line. Ten, substitution. The alarm bells ring. Just takes yeah, all the time in the world. And look at Kramer, that's meat and drink for a seven. I think you're actually drooling. Absolutely um, loving my thing. <laughs> Free shot, the young man gets up back to his feet. You can't take that much time at this level. But they just haven't got the danger men on the ball in the second half. France, Fico, Vakatawa, Peno. First 60 minutes just haven't touched the ball. They were the men who were causing chaos in the first half for the French. Need to get the ball in their hands as quickly as possible. Significant change this one. Benjamin Uda Pajeta is on for Nicolas Sanchez at fly half for the Pumas. Kubeli. Petty again wins the turnover for Argentina in the line out. By a knock on advantage. He has been everywhere, hasn't he? Here's Lavanini, his lock partner. Advantage over. Kubeli testing out in Tamak's aerial ability. He's held up very well under fire. Aldrit driven back, just a much greater urgency about the Argentinian work. Oh, Nadal, that's loose, very nearly fell for the boot of Moroni. Oh, this is classic France, isn't it? But so good in the first half, just falling to pieces, ball going to ground. Bamba setting this one up. Dupont, he's got underneath that. Play on. Tap back effectively, and he'll get a second bite of the cherry Dupont, but Carreras backpedaling, takes it nicely. He's got Buffelli on the inside. Lovely line from Buffelli, but Vakatawa makes a, an excellent tackle. Here come the Argentinians. Nice interplay between the centres. Good stepping from Orlando. Carreras deep inside the 22. Still, they keep it alive. Kramer in the fourth sucking in defenders in everywhere. Kubeli, Matera with the penalty it's advantage. On. Argentina with men to the right. Coming back against the grain, that might prove to be a costly decision. Matera once more. Captain tearing into the heart of those blue shirts. To Tasha Paro and then hack through by Fiku, and they will have the penalty. They've come to life, this Argentinian team. It's a sensational turnaround. It was on then, KT. If he backed himself on the outside, cut inside, blew the opportunity. Well, what about those passes? I don't know how these guys stayed in. There was absolutely some brilliant interchange. Yeah, that's a good pickup from the base, but right there, some good work by Argentina. Just come out with a more physical attitude in the second 40. No question about it, KT. They are transformed in this second period. I don't know what Damian Peno thought he was up to. This is the chance. Stella Foot just needs to back himself. Uge's probably spooked him by Shot. shooting up on the outside, forces him to turn inside. That could be a costly moment in the game. Matias Maroni was screaming for it on that right hand touchline. That's another penalty down here. You guys have to be very careful now. Down in this area, okay? Angus Gardner warning quite okay. low that but do you understand my message? right okay. on the edge, the French have conceded a yellow card. Incredible, isn't it? Incredible 19 minutes. France, complete control of this game at half-time. And they're still in the lead, but all the momentum is with Argentina. Benjamin Udapigeta. Any sign, Katie, of the French putting on the experience, pick them all to wash and all down there, or...? Looks like Thomas Ramos is just about to get up, but at the moment, still sitting down. 
We'll keep an eye on that, but in the meantime, three more points for Argentina. They are back within two, having trailed by 17 at the break. And Oda Pijeta on target with his first kick of the afternoon. Yeah, Ramos looks as if he's coming on for France. Normally plays his, plays his trade to fullback. I'm just in the see yeah, he's coming on for Medard. Yeah, Thomas Ramos, one of many very, very exciting young Toulouse backs that have all emerged kind of simultaneously, the likes of Dupont and Tamak, and he's replacing something of a French legend in Maxime Medard. Trent coming on to, man, and Jersey number 20. Pick him off for France. Pick him off, yeah, it was an interesting call, really, to, for me, to take off one of your most experienced players in Medard and throwing a youngster on, but you need some old heads out there. That man as experienced as anyone, he needs to galvanise his French team. They're on the back foot. Off goes Aldritz, and on comes France's most capped number eight. Louis Picamol, and um, a clearance kick this time from Pablo Matera. Something you see every day. Here's Picamol. He's been itching for that first contact for 61 minutes. Sitting frustrated on the bench. And Tamak for Ramos, who goes wide, and through the fingers of Uge, tidied up by Loré. Dupont is caught. French just can't set the base. Just so fluid in that first half, so organised. And as you see so often, just lost all their shape, all composure. You're a young pair of half-backs out there as well in Dupont and, and Tamak. Not a lot of experience, just need to settle this down. Too long with the box kick as well, giving Buffelli plenty of time to assess. They just look that much more comfortable on the ball at the moment, Argentina. Controlled and organised and working their way carefully upfield. And now Ntamak is driven hard into touch. Did well Ntamak just to get that ball away just before he was driven into touch. Again, though, we haven't mentioned Fico's name in this second half. Barely caused touched it. it. No, caused so many problems first half. Dupont. That's a better kick. Uge challenging hard, and it's there now for France. Camille Chad drops on it. Now they want some width, and Uge is frustrated because the whistle has been blown. And it's gone forward, so it will be Puma's ball yet again, and we're going to see more replacements. One and five replacements for White, please. Vivas into the front row for Argentina, and Alamano into yeah. the second row. No, not gone by you guys. Not gone in here. Lavanini and Teta Chaparro yeah. coming not off. In Uge end. looks in pain. Yeah. yeah, much better kick from Dupont, which allowed Uge to get up and contest and win the ball back to Sharp. Just loses the ball in contact. Big shift from Lavanini. Been a tough afternoon. Chaparro, but they've got their teams that that's where. The forwards have got this Argentinian team back into this game. OK, oh. time on. Well, they believe now, and I think that's probably the most significant thing, isn't it? That belief, that sense that we yeah, absolutely not did not have in the opening half. The first 40 minutes, they, they looked hesitant other than that, that okay, decent spell they had right at the outset. Stable. And on the flip side, Al, the French stable. have just gone into their shells. Stable. No leadership. It's all looking at each other, waiting for somebody else to create something. Discipline's gone. Well, you mentioned the timing of the replacements and the halfbacks, it seemed to me, are the next critical change that Jacques Prince. Brunel might make. In, in Machino and Lopez, Five. they're the men who've Set. been around the block. They're the men that he would look to to close out a match like this. Yeah. But it's no longer a... A question of really closing it out. They, they can't just cling on from here. They've got to play. I think that's what Argentina have done through their physicality, led because they've shortened up the field. The French have done the same. They're not even looking to spread the ball. What worked for them in the first half. So Argentina have done well to make the French play their type of game. Yeah, I think you're bang on there, Carl. Yeah. Crouch. 
Yet more jostling and trouble at the scrum. Yeah, the only original front row forward out there now was Jefferson Poirot. The rest are all replacements, just getting up to speed with the game. The scrums have been a mess really from the start. Crouch. Fine. Sit. Ball in, get it in. Use it. Cabelli. Using De La Fuente really tight to the ruck. Uh, it's been coughed up by Kramer, and the French have it to Paul, finding Vakatawa. Stop start from Ramos. Uda Pigetta in there trying to slow things up from a Puma perspective. Taken on by LaRue. And Tamak for Fiku. Who Presumably, at this point, from an Argentinian perspective, has a target on his front and his back. If and when he does receive the ball, they will not be allowing him any kind of space. They've got good width here, France, but they're going to the air. Tamak sends it up. Penno chasing in from his wing. A nasty he's away. landing, but Carreras is away, and he's gone well past Picamol. Carreras is dribbling it through, and it's well covered, ultimately, by Tamak. Glory beckoning for a Second minute there release. for Carreras and Argentina. That was class for Mantava, oh, loads yeah. of composure there. Didn't look flustered at all, but Penno was still down injured from that collision in the air. <laughs> oh. Penalty, Argentina. It's that man again, Guido Petty. What a game this Argentinian number four is having. For a big man to win, get over the ball in that situation. And it gives Argentina a chance, unbelievably, to go ahead. Well, Ola Pigetta has the ball in his hands, but there is a decision to be made. Three points on offer, the lead potentially on offer. A kiss for Guido Petty. Number four, he's over the ball. He had a little luck, he knew what was coming, but he stayed in there, stayed strong, wins the turnover. He's been inspired, that man. And he's letting the Ramahina know, Katie. You don't have to speak Spanish or French, you know what he's saying, either, do you? But that's what you love about the game, the ebbs and flow of it. We've certainly had that here this afternoon. Damian Penno gets to his feet, but um, he did not land well. Oh, and he had a knee in the face as well, just for... Yeah, Buffelli Dessert. and he came together with some force and he will disappear for a head injury assessment, Damian Penno. That is a, a setback for the French. Oh, okay. Trying to look at the body language of the Argentinians, whether they're going to take the throw. Yeah, TMO, TMO, here we go, boys. The challenge in the air, is that right? The challenge in the air, I think. OK, yeah, let's have a look at the challenge in the air. Let's have a look, mate. All right, be ready, it's coming up on the screen for you now. Television match official is Marius Jonker of South Africa. The question is, did Buffelli? He's looking nervous. Let's go back, please. Pipes. Both eyes on the ball there. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that for me. I think they've both gone for the ball. Yeah, both went up, which is important. You've got to get off the ground. Both yeah, in the air. It's just a fair contest there, really. Yeah, Show me one more. Yeah. I'm showing you one more angle. Yeah, I think they're both in a realistic position yeah, to contest the there, mate. Yep. All right, it was worth checking it. I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm good happy. With that. I'm happy. With that. No. Let's go. Yeah, right, cool. I'm happy, it's guys. Just... Back you go, please. Back 10 metres. Good decision and a quick one, too. I'm happy with the yeah. challenge. So brave, KT, yeah. these boys going up here, really. Well, the commitment showing, and it takes a lot, doesn't it? But he's been outstanding at the back. Yeah. Emiliano Bofale. So they're going for the posts. There was just a suspicion that they might tuck it into the corner again because they've had so much success with that driving ball from close range, but it falls to Benjamin Uda Pajeta to try to take the lead here for Argentina. That is a big sigh. This is a big moment.
from 17 points down, Argentina take the lead in Tokyo with 12 minutes to play. Unbelievable scenes in Tokyo. Still have a lot of this match left. But France, what are you made of? Big 13 minutes left in this game. Unbelievable turnaround. What an extraordinary match. Incredible shift in momentum. It is a game played so much in the head and the heart. Oh, they've turned over France. France have possession of it. We're going to see a few more swings before we're out. Taken on by Loré of France to the 22. Dupont for Cyril Bay, who's on now on the loose head side. Bamba. Good. Stay up. Drop goal this early. That's back in the pocket. Waiting for it. Lopez. That's brilliant. Sensational. Angus Garden needed to check, needed to get closer, but Camille Lopez only just arrived on the field. Killer strike. Well, I didn't even know he was on KT. And I, my initial thought was, what are you doing? And then amazing play, Lopez. Oh, don't you just love it, though? That's to and fro in these two teams. Putting on a show. It is quite the show. And we're not done yet. Ten minutes to go. The game very much in the balance. Who's going to grab Is it? No. this contest by the scruff of its neck? Lopez oh. flies 19, it away stop. once more. 19. Huge experience, of stop. course. Yeah. I don't want you moving straight away. Wait till you run off. No, you didn't. He's come back from a horrible leg break. Suffered a couple of seasons ago. It's a great strike. He's gone early. He's gone very early in the play. Just scrapes over the bar. That's what experience does. You know the exact situation. Straight on the field. First touch of the ball. Line out ball secured via Guido Petty of Argentina, and he has been utterly brilliant at moments. Very much the rock in that Puma's pack. Kramer wrestling with the ball and he's made sure he's on top of it. Taken up by Vivas. Uda Pijeta. Alamano. Brought down by Schapp. Petty again. The foot ball is loose. France have it. Fired forwards. Fuku's on his way. And it's Carreras who's back there for Argentina. Inside. Hold in front. Seven. Seven. Giving it some distance, but Picamol is lurking there. This is Ramos. And bouncing through the tackle of Carreras. Lore. Is the chance yes, turn over, the but it's Argentine ball. De La Fuente no, 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 caught no, 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 in two minds, swallowed up in the tackle. Oh. Good. The Argentina, of course, hard up with France in this contact here in the second half. With a Pigetta trying to find a, a little bit of space for Lezano, who's on in the back row for the Pumas. Medrano. Okay, out now. Out now. Well done. Oda Pijeta oh, again. Fiku couldn't hold it, Vakatawa is there. And, oh, they haven't managed to keep it in touch. Different player. How's your nerves? This is going to come down to discipline, composure. Nobody making a rash decision, Dupont's. He's had a very, very strong game, the French scrum half. Making way now for Machinot, who's got stacks of experience. Yeah, this is a significant moment. 
And Tamak replaced by Lopez, and now Dupont replaced by Machino. His first Rugby World Cup, he's a ball of energy, but he will bring a degree of calm. Great link man between forwards and backs, but this is a time for some cool heads. It's tense out there, KT. Oh, 100%, it's going to come down to one moment, isn't it, lads? Who's going to break first and who's going to seize control? Play on Mr. Sack, but it was all right. Very much feeling that way. Someone will have the opportunity to grab the glory. And there's the intercept, and Pickamore's onto it. Spread wide. Vakatawa able to run free for the first time in the second period. Ramos, Uge charging through. Back goes Moroni. France with their tails up. Yeah, Pickamore's makes a big impact with the interception. Gets France on the front foot. Was he offside? Oh, I tell you what. I think he's got away with one there, Louis Pickamore. Great work from Moroni. Great cover of Akatawa. You thought Ramos, good decision this time. But good pace from Moroni to get back. Good composure. That could be a key interception from. He's not happy. Ledesma screaming. Pick them all offside. What about the influence from the bench from this French team? But absolutely brilliant, hasn't it? Yeah. Full of experience. Lopez, pick them all. But it's a poor line out. <laughs> and yet again. The unexpected Argentine ball. Kramer goes to ground. They're only 15 metres out from the try line here, France. though. Approaching the 75 minute mark. Use it. Ball is just about cleared away, and uh, Kubeli's come in for some treatment. <laughs> I think. Fabian Galtier's face just about tells you everything. This match, from a French coaching team perspective, must be utterly maddening. They had total control of it. I think you've got to give, as much as they've fallen apart, you've got to give Argentina huge credit as well. They have just been inspired in this second half. The pack has really come to life. Oh, and that's a key, as I say. We talked about discipline, we talked about not keeping you, you. your composure. This man here, number four. No, and no, the no, penalty wait. has been given up. Now, this is no gimme. Yeah, you see pick them all with his hands. Lopez, yeah, I think you do go for the three aids. Eats into the clock as well, even if Lopez doesn't land this kick. They're taking a minute off the clock. Good work from the French pack, just when he was needed. Clean drive, and Petty, as good as a game he's had, just loses patience, comes in from the sides and give the penalty away. You've got to be more disciplined in, this, in that area at this time, don't you? Petty wasn't. Yeah, frustration writ large across the face of the Argentinian captain, Pablo Matera. The game in the balance. And Camille Lopez with a drop goal to his name. But it will be Roma and Tamak. To try to deliver three precious points. for been France a, and Ntamak. Been immaculate all afternoon, as you say. Just when it was needed, just to give him a little bit of breathing space, put him out of the penalty goal area, he misses. What a three minutes we've got on our hands here. Ramos. Every high ball, utterly critical at this stage. Safely taken in by Uda Pijeta. And here is Montoya. Scored the second Puma's try. Lost now. Oh. 
Lopez underneath it. But the onrushing Argentinians causing trouble. Machino. Camille Shah. It's a long old time to play down the clock. Two full minutes. And only a two point buffer. Any mistake could prove fatal. Boffelli. And there's a penalty played in the air, says Angus Gardner. And this will hand the opportunity to Argentina to snatch it at the death. This was a tight call. Yeah, it's the right call. It's the right call. There's no need for Fico to go in there and make the challenge. Just stand. You're not competing for the ball. Just let Buffelli take the ball and make the tackle. He held back, but he made contact. He made contact. And that's the all important bit. Buffelli knew exactly what he was doing. He milked the penalty. And he's got a huge boot on him, Buffelli, as well. I think he's the man. Yep, he's going to step up with a one wood here, Lance. He's got a little breeze behind him as well. So, Miliano Buffelli for the win. Boffelli is a long-range specialist. But tension is at an all-time high. Superb since his arrival on the international stage. But this is pressure unlike anything he would have felt. Buffelli for the win. It's going to sail on by. And France breathe a hefty sigh of relief. 20 seconds less. Oh, it was a fantastic effort, wasn't it, from Buffelli? Look from the angle we are sitting as if it were no worse. Had the distance. Heartbreaking for all the up. Pumas fullback. You must take the restart. But this party restart is nearly touch. starting okay. cannot, for the French. The, re, the, the restart. Yeah. No, the restart must stay in. Understand? Camille Lopez is, is appearing not to listen to Angus Gardner. Let's hope he's got the message loud and clear on, and that he back, knows the law back. book. Yeah, this isn't over yet. It's got to stay in play. So Argentina, this is your last chance. Would a Pijeta. Can they squeeze out one last penalty? Kramer. All hands on deck here for France. Clock deep into the red. De La Fuente bustling his way upfield as he has done throughout the game. France, all of them offside, but that seemingly doesn't trouble the referee. Phase after phase, can they get somewhere within range for a drop goal, potentially? Leave it now, France, leave it! France, leave it! Leave yeah, it. I thought they had a sniff of a turn over there, the French. Still they go through those tight exchanges. Kramer again, the blue shirts, flat, very flat at best, offside at worst, and the French just might have turned the ball over here. Argentina know the game is up. Yeah, Machino using his all his experience. They timed it to perfection, came through the middle of the ruck. In a sense, he's won the game from France. They've got it. They've secured the ball. Out it comes. And it's fired away by Lopez. And the French are celebrating. A thriller in Tokyo to kick off Pool C. And they're off. And it is all boiling over. The drama just a little bit too much for some. A disappointing end to what was a fabulous contest. The French, who surely had it all sewn up at half-time, have seen it through, but they've seen it through by the skin of their teeth. And they are looking dangerous, just as Argentina do. A little bit of a warning, you suspect, for England in this pool. Notice has been served, but the French victorious by the narrowest of margins. Full-time, France 23, Argentina 21.
time for your MasterCard player of the yeah, match, Martin. his first half performance, Gail Fico, my MasterCard player of the match, quite in the second half, but he was probably the difference in class in that first half, give France the edge. Notable mentions, though, for Argentina, Guido Petty, skipper Pablo Matera, but fairly at fullback, sensational, but for his first half performance, Gail Fico, my MasterCard player of the match. Take a breath, everybody. That was something. Broad smiles for Uge and France. These were the closing moments. There's no long loss at the end. Here he comes, Machino. On another day, Laurie gets penalised for not rolling away, makes it difficult for Cabelli, and he is absolutely booming. Yeah, not a nice end of the game. Yeah, it all got a little bit too much. And that face says a lot. A nail-biter, real nail-biter. Incredible game. Half-time, complete control of French. S scored some out of the world rugby. But huge credit the Argentinian team. Dominated the second half and so unlucky not to come away with a win. Time to hear from the teams. Well, Pablo Montero, I know, very disappointed. Uh, but in that second half, the, the, the way your team played, you must be very proud of that. Yeah, obviously, uh, not good enough. Really, really bad start from, from us as a team, and it's not good enough with only one half. What do you think was such a stop start, start to the game for you? I, I think uh, France at the beginning didn't, did, didn't do too much, but they, they take the opportunities and they score points with the opportunities, and that's when they go uh, uh, very long in the, in the result, and then it's, it's difficult to run from behind. I know it's a lot to build on, it's only the first game in the tournament, you've laid the platform, but good luck for the next game, eh? Thank you very much. Huge disappointment for Pablo Matera and his suggestion that they only really played for one half is hard to argue with. The French celebrating by contrast. Time to hear from their camp. Well, Cap, I know a fantastic win. I'm going to talk a lot. What was going through your head um, when Argentina were taking their chance right at the death there with the penalty? What was going through your head? Uh, I think the game is finished and uh, we lost the game. Uh, very, very uh, proud of, uh, of my boys and. Uh, it's a tough game tonight, but uh, we are very happy to start the competition with a win. We we supposed to the, we can to continue to work for the second half because we never control the game and we never uh, control the ball in the second half. But we are very proud of the first half because we are very clinical and we when we play like this we are very dangerous. So what was the reason in the second half you didn't have that continuity? I don't know really, but we uh, never control the ball. We are doing just two or three phases. We are playing a lot of uh, of a kick chase, and I think uh, we are better when we play uh, with them. You're smiling now. You were smiling in some of those scrums too. I mean, they were quite tough today, weren't they? Yeah, like every time the scrum is very hard, and uh, we don't uh, understand like uh, like uh, Angus want to do uh, today, but. We, we can to continue to, uh, to train and, uh, and continue to, uh, to work for, for the next week. A lot of fantastic supporters followed you over here. What was it like running out uh, to Tokyo Stadium with all your support? Thank you for the supporters to uh, coming tonight and uh, see you next time. Congratulations, good luck. Well, they will feel like they dodged a bullet, I suspect, the French having been in total command. But uh, talk about game of two halves, Martin. Massive cliche, but absolutely the case in this instance. Absolutely was. Look at those penalties conceded. All Argentina put in France under pressure, 13 to 5. And for me, the offloads. That was the difference in the first half. 
France 19, Argentina 6. Just had that little bit more class cutting edge to get over the try line, but what an encounter. So everybody just taking stock. And the Argentinians can barely believe it. We're going to hear some more reaction from France. We're here with uh, Greg Aldred. Just tell me how tough was that? Yeah, really, really a tough game. Uh, we knew we were face a really uh, strong team of uh, Argentina. And uh, after a stressful game, we uh, we are happy to, to win this game. In the first half, you looked very free with your counter-attack, but in the second half, you just really couldn't get out wide. What do you think that was? I think uh, second half, uh, their forwards uh, did a really, really a good job uh, uh, near a uh, line, uh, score line, and uh, this, this two try uh, on uh, on the line outs are uh, uh, a bad point for us. I mean, you had a very experienced bench for this game. How important was it for them to come on and, and keep a high level? But we know that uh, every game of uh, a rugby World Cup is uh, is uh, tough, and uh, we know that the 20 minutes are tough as well. So we had uh, experience to, to finish the game, and uh, they did really, really well. Well, congratulations on the win. Good luck for the next one, eh? Thanks a lot. Let the celebrations begin in earnest. For those wearing the tricolour. So many different emotions swirling around in Tokyo. Emiliano Buffelli, who had the penalty that could have secured the win for Argentina in the final minute of the match. Can only feel for him. Time to hear from the Argentina coach. We're here with Argentinian coach Mario Ledesma. I mean, just give me your thoughts on, on, on just what just occurred. Well, it's difficult just after the game, but uh, well, missed opportunities in the first half, especially those 10 minutes we spent over there, lying out more, scrum. Didn't understand what was calling that scrum neither, but... Um, and then second half, very good second half, created many opportunities, scored, missed, missed two points, missed three points in the first half. And, well, it comes down to that, but... Uh, and the other thing is, it's a shame to be, to be refereed like a small nation, a one-point pick -a -mole. He takes the ball two metres or three metres offside. Lion man, touch judge, he says it to the ref. Ref doesn't hear it. And in the last, last ball over there, the tackle doesn't roll away. And our number nine cannot get the ball. So uh, it was an easy penalty for our kicker. Uh, but yeah, I know, very frustrating, I'm sure. But just tell me, what did you say to your team at halftime? Because they come out a very different side. Just to start doing what we, what we train. I think that uh, we didn't do anything in the first half. Defended badly and uh, didn't attack well. We've lost every ball into contact. So uh, just start doing what we, we've been doing for a while now. I know it's a lot of um, good play amongst that uh, game. You've laid a platform. Good luck for the next one, coach. Thank you very much. Argentina, two sides that have rich history in the Rugby World Cup, but it was the French who took command in the opening half, and it was Vakatawa who stood up Matera, releasing Fiku, and it took a little bit of finishing. A oh, sensational first half from France, they really were, they were unstoppable. A joy to watch, ball in hand, strength for power, the support play, France of yesteryear, and we thought they're back. They were going absolutely brilliant at that point. It was Dupont who'd scored their second. Argentina, though, after the break, came pairing back into contention. Petty from close range. And then a second quickly followed from the replacement hooker, Julian Montoya. The driving line out, drawing dividends. And at this point, Argentina really did believe 
a couple of penalties put them in front, but then Lopez struck with a drop goal off the bench and restored the French lead. We weren't done at that point, though. That was an inspired second half from the Argentinians. Their puck just went up a level. The man Petty was sensational. But Lopez came off the bench, as you say, Ali, just to seal things, just to use that all that experience. This was the incident involving Fiku and Boffelli playing the man in the air, giving away the penalty. He'd been so brilliant in the first half. Gael Fiku, he gave Emiliano Boffelli the chance to win it for Argentina, but it curled on the breeze. And away went Argentina's hopes. Player of the match, Gael Fiku. And a worthy recipient after a quite brilliant first 40 minutes, certainly. Yeah, he was very, very classy, wasn't he, in that first half? treated to a fabulous match here in Tokyo, a thriller to kick off Pool C. They've ended their misery against Argentina at Rugby World Cups France today, looking so, so dangerous in the opening half and sneaking through at the death by 23 points to 21.